Now you've reached the office of Academic Asaurus. If you're calling about a submission to the journal, please be aware that we are running behind schedule due to the large number of trash fires that have been happening in the university's library. We hope to be back on schedule as soon as finals end and the students go away. So leave your name and number and we'll get back to you. Thanks. Hi, you've reached Dan Dye, Associate Professor of Humanities and Managing Editor for <sighs> Academic Thesaurus. I'm currently out of the office, but if you leave your number and a message, I will get back to you as soon as possible. If this is class-related, please refer to my posted office hours or email me for a speedier reply. If this is about your final grades, forget it. You're screwed. Hey, Anne. It's Ida. Um, what's going on around campus? I think I heard sirens. Call me back. Oh, great. Why is this starting to feel like a last woman on Earth scenario? Hi, you've reached Beatrice West. I'm not available at the moment, but leave your name and number, and I'll return your call within a reasonable time frame. If your questions pertain to research help or the Briar University Library in general, please contact the reference desk. Which I am not. Hey, B, Ida. I'm just trying to figure out what's going on since I can't reach Anne, and she's usually the one. Oh, hang on. I'm getting another call. I think it's Anne's cell phone. Call me back. Ida Winters. Where the hell are you? Where am I? Where are you? I just called your office. Well, I'm not in my goddamn office, considering we've all been evacuated. What? No, we haven't. There's a fire in the library. We've been evacuated. Well, I haven't. I'm still in my office. Where's your cell phone? Um, dead? Uh, well, if you ever charge it again and use it as something other than an expensive paperweight, you'll find roughly 20 emergency messages about the fact that you were supposed to evacuate the goddamn building. So, should I leave? She's still up in her stupid attic. <laughs> but you just called your attic stupid. I like my office, thank you. But, but for real, like, should I be leaving? Where is this fire? I don't really want to Janie or my way out of this life. Uh, it's in the stacks all the way in the back basement. You know, by my office. Because if there's one thing this school knows, it's how to perpetuate a stereotype. <laughs> Victorian Gothic in the attic. American Gothic in the basement. Okay, okay, but the important thing. I don't need to evacuate? I think it's mostly out already. It wasn't a big fire. For once, the damp seems to have done something outside of caused chronic respiratory disorders. <sighs> Alright, well, I guess I'll just stay. It sounds too loud down there anyway. Hey, charge your phone while you're at it. Tell her not to forget about the department meeting. Oh, B says don't forget about the department meeting. Oh, maybe they'll cancel due to extreme emotional dis- Oh, boy. What? Hi, Dr. Kant. Did everyone get out okay? I mean, Ida got left up in her tower because, God forbid, we have a reliable evacuation warning system. But yeah, everyone else seems okay. Oh, is that Ida? Let me speak to her. And. Uh, uh alright. Ida, hi, it's Emily Kant. Hi, Dr. Kant. I was wondering the status of your article. Uh, what? Your article? The one you're meant to be editing for Academic Asaurus? Are you almost finished? Um, I was under the impression that the issue isn't coming out until August. It's May, Ida. August isn't that far away. Well, actually, I didn't mean to talk to you about it. Oh, yes? Yeah, I'm I'm gonna need another article option. This one won't work. Dr. Kant? Let me just move away from these sirens. What do you mean it won't work? Well, it doesn't actually make any sense. This is the article by Katya Shishishevich? Uh, yeah. Explain. So, the article's main focus is on comparing the feud between Dickens and Thackeray to a modern-day internet battle, much like, I guess, what happened in Gamergate or whatever. That sounds insightful and perfectly in line with Academic Source's mission statement to connect the popular with the academic. What's the problem? Sure, and maybe it could have been, except she then spends half the article talking about how Charles Dickens was actually a woman. 
Hello? And? Well, Dickens wasn't a woman. Dickens was definitely a man. Well, perhaps there's precedents that you're unfamiliar with. Did anyone actually ever see this Dickens? Uh, many people, actually. He earned a good portion of his living from public speaking engagements. He was a highly visible celebrity figure. Well, Ida, I'm sure Katia must have very good reasons for her argument, so I wouldn't be so quick to dismiss it based on a rudimentary knowledge of a Victorian author. Victorian literature is my doctoral degree. Children's literature, yes. That doesn't- I'm sure you'll find a way to power through. I'd like to see those edits by the end of the month. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to speak to the fire chief. <laughs> yeah, hi. Did she actually just ask you if anyone had ever seen Charles Dickens? All right, first thing, what exactly does Dr. Kant have her degree in that is so important that we all have to call her Dr. Kant? Probably education. Or maybe it's because of her hair. Oh God, is it still perfect? It's flawless, like not even a single fly away, and I look like I'm in a wind tunnel. Great shoes, too. God, I hate her. Anyway, what's this about Charles Dickens? Let me just read you. Uh, okay, this. Here. This is where I stopped and began to develop alcoholism. Oh, God. All right. While it is difficult to logically and emotionally compare a Victorian squabble with today's highly personal brand of feud found on internet forums, the comparisons are still plentiful. Whereas now we have prominent female figures being attacked by male internet users seeking to reassert their power, we can find similar shades within Thackeray's harassment of Dickens to assert his own supremacy in the literary field. The parallels continue when you accept the modern discovery that Dickens was, in fact, a woman, thus providing a solid gender-based commonality between the two methods of argumentation. What? My response was similar, but had stronger language. Modern discovery that Dickens was a woman? Has she seen that guy's beard? Did you just say Charles Dickens was a woman? Look, photography had been invented when Dickens was alive. He was a journalist. He gave talks to people. He regularly got on stage. But beyond that, this is a guy with... Ten children, a wife, a mistress, probably a kid with her too. That's kind of hard to do back then if you're not a man. There's literally zero scholarship or common sense to make this claim. Until now, I guess. What's the rest of the article like? I mean, fairly straightforward, I guess. I don't find the point of comparison very convincing. I think it's downright weak, but I just, I don't understand. Have you tried looking her up? Who? What are you talking about? Put it on speaker. Do not put it on speaker. I don't want to hear more sirens. Here, come it's closer than I ever wanted to get to you. The feelings mutual die. Please tell me you two are cheek to cheek. That's so adorable. Anyway, have you looked up this cat show, whatever the heck? I have. Um, haven't found anything, really. But, Anne, seriously, that kind of statement should be more than enough to kill this article. The content itself, full of false equivalence, flawed comparison. But, I mean, just to make a statement like that, it's not going to look good for us or for independent scholars in general. And they already have the reputation of being some kind of crackpot fringe element of academia. Oh, she's an independent scholar? Yes, she is. Uh, look, send it over to me. I'll pull the article and write the rejection. If Dr. Emily Kant can't handle it, she'll have to fight with me instead. Thank you. I just can't with her. Huh, you can't with Kant. Ooh, better yet, send it to B, too. She'll be outstandingly direct about it. Don't send me shit, Di. Wait, is this for Lady Dickens? Yes. Okay, definitely send that to me. I want to investigate this crap. Spoken like a true academic. <laughs> God damn it, mother... Bullshit! Don't, don't you slap me, this is my phone! When do you want this thing? Let me see if I can get back to my office yet. I've still got about a billion papers to grade before I submit final grades, so I'll be here for hours. Um, send it over. Sounds good. You can't miss it. It's given to me in a purple hologram folder with the unicorn sticker. Uh, okay. Hopefully she's not gonna throw some fit at getting rejected. Of course she will. Nobody holds a grudge like an academic. Great. Well, at least she'll be emailing you and not me. Uh, Happy grading! There is no such thing. Bye. Bye. <laughs> 
Academicosaurus is a podcast written and produced by Mary O'Reilly. Our performers are Marina Matlock as Ida Winters, Amanda Funk Hilton as B. West, and Mary O'Reilly as Anne Dye. This episode also featured Tina as Dr. Emily Kant. The theme music for Academicosaurus is Shake It by Jazar. It's what you're listening to right now. You can find more of his amazing work at betterwithmusic.com. Thank you for listening to our first episode of Academicosaurus. If you enjoyed our show, please leave us a review uh, wherever that's supposed to happen. In return, we promise fewer sirens next time. Maybe.